Hi, this is Dr. Kurt Wohler for Integrative Medicine Academy. The title of this short video is Glyphosate Exposure and Microbiome Disruption. So unfortunately, all of us are exposed to glyphosate, whether we want to or not. It's something used as an herbicide all over the world. Now we can avoid it ourselves for the most part if we don't use it on let's say our own lawn or buy food like GMO food, try to buy organic. The amount of glyphosate that has been used over the past number of dec decades has gone up significantly and there's many health conditions associated with it. This was one example of increasing autism rates coinciding with increasing use of glyphosate. Now it's sprayed on various crops Corn, soy, cotton, canola, for example, are crops that are heavily sprayed with glyphosate. And so there was an interesting article in a journal called Entropy back in 2013 that was looking at glyphosate's ability to suppress cytochrome P450 enzymes, which is essentially phase one of our liver detoxification and how this could lead to microbiome problems in the gut. So we know that glyphosate can act as an antibiotic that can disrupt gut bacteria, particularly healthy bacteria. It can disrupt the liver enzymes, which would impair bile flow and vitamin D absorption. It can damage red blood cells leading to anemia. They've even seen low-grade encephalopathy linked to chronic glyphosate exposure. It can interfere with the methylation cycle. So it essentially interferes with the synthesis of different aromatic amino acids and methionine, which can then compromise neurotransmitter function. It can disrupt sulfate synthesis and sulfate transport, which is important for liver detoxification, but also our digestive system as well. So it can lead to leaky gut, leaky blood brain barrier, etc. It is even a chelator of minerals and metals, for example, that would be in the environment within the soil. So as I mentioned before, it is an active ingredient used as a popular herbicide around the world. Again, sprayed on certain crops like corn, soy. One of the other things it does is it inhibits an enzyme called EPSP synthase, which is needed by plants to grow. So EPSP synthase inhibits the formation of this chemical called 5 enol pyruvyl shikimate 3-phosphate. And this chemical becomes charismic acid, which then uh, goes off to become or incorporate into tyrosine, phenylalanine metabolism, as well as tryptophan metabolism in plants. So if we inhibit it upstream, we inhibit the shikimate chemical, we inhibit charismic acid, and then eventually we inhibit, inhibit downstream tyrosine, phenylalanine, and tryptophan. And why that's important is that might be okay for a weed, for example, but it's not great for bacteria, particularly the bacteria that live in our digestive tract. And this is just one example of an article came out a few years back that was looking at the microbiome in the impact that glyphosate had on it. So glyphosate, as I mentioned before, can have antibiotic properties. So it can disrupt the microbiome, causing a tip or a shift in the ratio between beneficial and harmful bacteria. So what they're finding is an increased proliferation of pathogenic bacteria, like Salmonella, Clostridium bacteria, even Clostridium botulinum, becoming resistant. And then we get a decrease in the healthy bacteria, the Enterococcus, Bifidobacter, Lactobacillus, etc. So we can start to see an adverse shift of the microbiome away from healthy bacteria to more pathogenic bacteria. By the way, that can also lead to an increase of opportunistic yeast like Candida. This is something that I've seen over and over throughout the years, particularly in many individuals who have just chronic recurrent clostridia problems and candida and other fungal issues. Now we discuss this topic and many others regarding chemical exposure, heavy metal exposure, mold, mycotoxin exposure in our toxicity mastery course. 
You can find out more information about the Toxicity Mastery Course at ToxicityMasteryCourse.com. You can also email us at ToxicityMasteryCourse at gmail.com for more information. If you are a healthcare practitioner who is working in the world of integrative and functional medicine and you would like to interact with us directly, we have a membership website for healthcare practitioners called Functional Medicine Clinical Rounds where you can schedule one-on-one -on -one consults with us for lab reviews, uh, clinical troubleshooting, case analysis. We also have educational material um, and uh, downloadable documents for test interpretation. So you can book a consult with us through the website. You can also post questions to us on an ongoing basis through the forum, the member forum within the website as well. I mentioned there are test interpretation documents, what are called clinical rounds data sheets. These can be specific markers on the test. Sometimes these are clinical pearls, looking at a wide variety of integrative and functional medicine tests and concepts. These are all downloadable as one page PDFs, all accessible through the membership of FunctionalMedicineClinicalRounds.com. If you have any questions about Integrated Medicine, Medicine Academy, the different mastery courses that we offer through our academy, you can go to IntegratedMedicineAcademy.com for a complete list of courses. You can also email us at IntegratedMedicineAcademy at gmail.com. I'm Dr. Kurt Wohler for Integrated Medicine Academy. Thank you.